Hello again, and welcome back to Advanced Data Mining with Weka. This is Lesson 1.3. We're going to look at the time series forecasting package now to do roughly what we did uh, last in the last lesson without the time series forecasting package. So we need to install it first of all. So let me go to my Weka Tools menu, the Package Manager. Here's the Package Manager, and uh, here are the packages. And if I kind of scroll down, it's kind of pretty hard to find things in this list of packages. But um, near the end is the time series forecasting package. And uh, if I click install here, that will install it. Actually, it's already installed on my computer, so I'm not going to do that. I've got the airline data loaded here. The time series package has given me this additional forecast tab. I'm going to go straight to that. And without any more ado, I'm just going to click Start and see what happens. Well, the time series package transforms the data into a large number of attributes. Unfortunately, you don't get to see the attributes in the pre-process panel. We still just have those two attributes there. You don't see the generated attributes there. You have to go to the forecast panel and look here. Here's the original attributes, and here's the transformed training data passenger numbers. We got month, quarter, date, date remapped. The date remapped is like what we did for the date in the last lesson. We did it manually. We changed it from milliseconds since January the 1st, 1970, into something more sensible. Uh, this actually does a better job because it takes proper account of which years are leap years and which years aren't leap years. Then we've got these lagged variables, the passenger numbers lagged by, we just had 12 before, but we've now we've got the lags by 1, 2, 3, right up to 12 for 12 months, I guess. We've got the square of the date remapped and the cube of the date remapped, in case you need those, and a bunch of other things, the date remapped times these lagged variables. That's a lot of variables. And underneath here is the generated model, which is very complicated. Let's see how well it does. Actually, it doesn't show here how well it does. To see that, we have to turn on Perform Evaluation. Let me click that here, run it again, and we get a root mean square error of 10.6 on the um, training set, uh, which looks good. Uh, last time we got 16.0. That was the best figure we got. But remember, this is the error on the training set. That's always very misleading. Let's make a simpler model. There's a lot of attributes here. I'm going to. Uh, we can't edit the generated attributes, like I said, but we can apply a filter. So I'm going to go to Advanced Configuration, and for my base learner, I'm going to choose the Filtered Classifier. And in the Filtered Classifier, I'm going to specify linear regression, just like we had before. And for the filter, I'm going to choose uh, remove, the remove attribute filter. Here it is. And I'm going to configure that to remove attributes number 1, 4, and 16, which I happen to know are the correct ones. I'm sorry, I'm going to leave attributes 1, 4, and 16. I'm going to set invert selection to true. So these are the three attributes I leave. Well, let's just see what happens. Go back and look at my attributes, and here's the generated attributes that we saw before. Now, here's the filtered attributes. We've got passenger numbers, we've got date remapped, and we've got this lag by 12. This is what we did in the last lesson, remember? And uh, let's see how we get on here. We got a root mean squared error of 27.8. Actually, we got that on the last lesson, but uh, we got even better results by deleting the first 12 instances. Remember, the first 12 instances uh, have got lagged values with unknown values, and linear regression does bad things with unknown values, at least as far as time series are concerned. So I want to delete the first, uh, the first 12 instances. Now, I could do that by, I want to apply two filters, removing attributes and removing instances, and I could use the multi-filter. But actually, on the time series forecasting panel, there's an easy way of doing that, which you really need to learn, because you're going to be doing it a lot. Uh, in advanced configuration, we're going to look at the lag creation and the more options, and we're going to say removing remove leading instances with unknown lag values. And let me run that, and now I get 
a root mean square error of 15.8 and a model which is exactly the same as the model we got in the last uh, lesson. 1.07 times lag passenger numbers plus 12.7. That's what we got before. Now let's just return to this full model that we had. Let's go back to the, we won't use the filtered classifier, we'll use the, uh, just use linear regression. Here it is. And now we get uh, a root mean square of 8.7. Looks fantastic. But the model looks extremely complicated. We looked at it before. Here it is again. Look at the complexity of this model. So it's probably overfitted. What we'd like to do is to evaluate this on held out training data. And we can do that with the evaluation panel. We're going to evaluate on, on uh, I'm going to evaluate on, we can either have a fraction here or a number of instances. I'm going to evaluate on 24 instances. That is two years worth of instances. And uh, run that. And I get an error on the test data of 59. That's huge. The error on the training data is only 6.4. So let's just have a look at this on the slide. With a full model, all the attributes, we've got this enormous gap between the training error and the test error. And with a simple model with just two attributes, there, there's a little gap, but not very big. So we could try reducing the attributes in another way. We could actually use the attribute selected classifier. I won't do that for you, but to do that, I'd have to choose the uh, meta learner attribute selected classifier and specify linear regression as the base learner and then specify some attribute selection method. Uh, and if I left that at its defaults, all the defaults, I would in fact get four attributes selected. And I'd get a training and test error of 11 and 19. Still some indication of overfitting. The gap between these two figures really indicates overfitting. Now we reduce the lag, we, we reduce the model to two attributes using, the, uh, using a filter, uh, the remove filter. But actually there's a simpler way of doing that, which you need to learn in the forecast panel. If you go to the lag creation, it's going to create lags between 1 and 12. We saw those. If you use custom lag lengths, we can increase that to 12. And now it's only going to create the lag length of 12. I can remove the powers of time. Remember we have the time squared and the time cubed. And we can remove the product of time and lag variables. And if I go to periodic attributes here, and click customize then I can include whichever ones of these attributes uh, it wants to generate now I'm not going to include any of those so that will get us the simplest kind of attribute set I've just run that and let's look now at the attributes being used just three of them passenger numbers date remapped and this lag by 12 and down here, of course, we get the same result as what we get, got before. We got the same model and the same training and test errors. If we plot these things, this is the training data. Now, remember, we're ignoring the first 12 instances at the beginning uh, because we have unknown values for the lagged variable. And we're reserving 24 instances at the end for testing. So if we look now at the full model, we get this kind of red line. And you can see the predictions over the test data are starting to vary from those data points. If you look at the simple model, the one with just two attributes, then we get a more accurate line. Here they are, in fact, both together. And you can see the blue one for the simple model is more accurate than the red one for the full model. And we're using uh, one step ahead predictions to evaluate the error here, which means that they can errors can propagate. If you look at the solid red line towards the end, the first of those big dips is an error. And then the second sort of double dip, that's uh, an error that's propagated from the first error. Once it starts making an error, then in, the, in, in this kind of evaluation, when we're evaluating the one step ahead each time, the errors are going to propagate. So that's a pretty bad thing. Once you start making errors, they get worse and worse. OK, that's it. So Weka's time series forecasting package makes it easy to experiment with lagged variables and other kinds of things like that. Uh, it automatically generates many attributes, uh, perhaps too many attributes, 
and uh, so it's a good idea to always try simpler models. You can use the remove filter, which we did at first, or you can you can choose which attributes you want using the lag creation and periodic attributes uh, tabs in the under advanced configuration. As always in data mining, you need to be aware of evaluation based on the training data, and uh, you can hold data out using the evaluation tab. And uh, finally, we're evaluating time series using repeated one step ahead predictions, which means that errors propagate. Uh, there's a reference here for a paper which talks about this approach to time series analysis. And what you should do now is to go to the activity associated with this lesson, which will take you through the kinds of things we've done here, but using a different base learner, not linear regression. So have fun with that, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye for now.